Hello and welcome back. Now, from the beginning of this course, we were writing PySpark data frame APIs. Now, Spark offers one more fantastic feature, which is known as Spark SQL. Again, Spark SQL is an abstraction of Spark core APIs. So, whatever we have done till today with Spark data frame APIs can also be done using Spark SQL. This is where Spark becomes very handy. Now, if you're not aware of Python or PySpark APIs, you can always use SQL and get started with Spark from the very first day. And today we will understand how Spark SQL works. We will see the different catalog options that Spark provides. We will see how to persist metadata in Spark. And we will also see the hints that Spark SQL provides us for optimizations. Now, if you have not seen our previous video, I'd recommend you to go back and watch our playlist from the beginning. So without any further delay, let's begin. Now, I am in my JupyterLab environment. Spark SQL offers a lot of things. If you go and open Spark documentation, you can find a lot of things that Spark SQL offers. Now, it is not possible to cover everything. But today, I will show you the necessary things that you need to do in order to get started with Spark SQL. So, as we know that in order to work with Spark, we first need to generate a Spark session. So, today I'll do it in my local. So, let me generate the Spark session first. My Spark session is ready. Let me go ahead and refresh the Spark UI. Great, my Spark UI is up and running. Let me go back. Now, we will read two datasets, employee and department, and we will do all the necessary functions in Spark SQL. Now, we know to read the dataset, we can use Spark read format CSV and we can provide the location of the files. Right? So, let's read the datasets as a data frame. So, I'm reading the employee data as EMP data frame. And similarly, I'll read the department data as DEPT data frame. Awesome. Now that we have created our employee and department data frames, first understand what is catalog. Catalog is something which stores your metadata. And when we talk about metadata, metadata is the data about your data. It means it stores the information about your table, the column names, the data types, and the other metadata related to your tables or the views that you are going to create. Now, by default, the catalog implementation can be seen using Spark SQL catalog implementation. And if I run this, the default catalog implementation is in memory. It means your catalog will be created in RAM. And once this session is lost, your catalog will also be lost. Right? But that's not a good thing because if we create a table and if we want to read the table next time, it will not be available because the in-memory catalog will be lost once your session is closed. To help with that, we will also see one more catalog implementation is Hive that Spark provides. But first, let's get started with Spark SQL. We will implement the persistent metastore with Hive next. Now, in order to run a Spark SQL, you need to write spark.sql and within brackets, you can provide any query in SQL. So consider we want to see the databases. So to show the databases in this catalog, we can write show databases. Now, if I run this, awesome, this query ran, but we didn't see any output, right? Because by default, Spark works with data frames. So whenever you run any query against spark.sql, that will create a data frame in the output. So we can assign this to a data frame, right? Let's make the data frame name as db. So if I run this, it will create a data frame called db and I can do db.show. Nice. It gives me the only database that is available, which is default. Awesome. Now that we know how to run query, let's go ahead and see the tables available in this database. So to see the tables, I'll write spark.sql. We can write so tables in default. Now we know this will return a data frame, but to show the data, I'll write show. And show is an action. So when I run this, you can see the output. But again, if I go to data frames and so if I expand this, you can see a job executed in the background. So Spark is using the core APIs in the background. The abstraction is Spark SQL. Let me go back and you can see right now there are no tables in this particular database, right? So let's register two of our data frames that we have created as views. So to do that, I'll write emp dot. If I place a tab, you can see multiple options. It says create global temp view. It says create or replace global temp view. Then you can see other options like create or replace temp view, create temp view. Now, what are all this? If I create a global temp view, it will be available in other sessions as well. But if I create a normal temp view, it will be available only in this session. So let's create a normal temp view. Okay. So I'll name this as EMP view. Okay. Similarly, for department, we will create another view. Now, let me run this. Nothing will happen because this is telling SPA to create a view for this particular data frame. Now, let me rerun this show tables in default. So, if I run this, now you can see two views created. Now, if you see one more thing, it says is temporary is true. It means this is a view, not a table because for a table, you will see the table name plus it will be is temporary as false. Okay. So, this is temporary. It means 
once this session is lost this view will also be lost okay now that our views are ready let's go ahead and query the data from it so to do that again we will write spark dot sql and within brackets we'll write our query consider you have a multi-line query now in order to write a multi-line query you have to use triple quotes so i will use triple quotes then you can press enter and you can write any multi-line query within it so let me write select star from emp view so if i run this again this will create our data frame but now you can see all the columns for the data frame here right to view the data we have to call the action right so i'll write show awesome you can see the data for the employee right so let's do one thing let's put a filter now we know in sql we can write where let's put a filter called department id equals one let's rerun this awesome now you can see the data for department id so you now know it's so easy using spark sql and in return it provides you a data frame so if you want to manipulate it using PySpark api you can create a department filtered data frame from here and then you can start using this data frame so if i run this it will create a data frame called emp filter now you can use this data frame to do your manipulation in spark data frame api so if i want to see the data i can run emp filter dot show right so you can use spark sql in order to generate or manipulate your data in form of data frames as well okay now that we know that we can manipulate the data can we create or remove columns the answer is yes now Consider we want to create a new column called DOB year. Now this DOB year would extract the year from date of birth. So let's do this in Spark SQL. So what I'll do is I'll copy this Spark SQL from top. I'll paste it here. Okay. Now I'll use aliasing here. So I'll put EMP view as E. Okay. Now I'll put E dot star. Now when I put E dot star, it will print out all the columns, right? Now I'll create a new column. Say DOB year. Now extract the year. We know we can use the date format function. Now, all the functions that are provided in Spark Data Frame API are by default available for Spark SQL. You don't need to import anything. You just can use directly within the SQL command. So, I'll use date format and I'll pass the DOB column and I need to extract the year. So, I'll write YY, YY. Okay. Now, let me put show in order to view the data. So, if I run this, let me zoom out a bit. Awesome. You can see the column here. Let me rename this. In order to rename, we can write as DOB year. And let me rerun this. Awesome. You can see the DOB year column extracting the year. Okay. So right now we are filtering based on department ID. Let's remove this filter and let's rerun this. Awesome. We can see it for all the departments, right? So this is how the data manipulation can also be done. You can use the Spark SQL functions that are available with SpySpark and you can run them directly within Spark SQL. Okay. Now, Consider we want to create a new view for this particular data frame. Okay. So consider we will write it as EMP temp and we'll put this as. So this is now a data frame, right? Let me run this. So it will create an EMP temp data frame. Correct. Now again, we can register this as view. Correct. So I'll write create and replace temp view and I'll create a new view called EMP temp view. Let me run this. Awesome. Let me go ahead and show you this. So I'll rerun this and you can see now it has created a temp view now if you want to see the data for this temp view you can always write spark.sql and within this you can write select star from emp temp view and we will put show in order to view the data so if i run this awesome now you can see the new column in this view right because we have registered this as data frame then we have written this as a new temp view okay now this temp view is again available in our catalog because we have registered it right now okay awesome now that we have our tables ready let's do a join so in order to do a join we know we can use spark.sql and i'll use triple quotes here now we'll write the sql query so i'll write select say star and i'll write from and we will use the new view that we created so we'll use emp temp view okay we'll write it as e I'll do left outer join. So I'll write left outer join with department. So we have DEPT view, right? We'll put it as D and we'll put on E dot department ID, which is our joining column. So I'll copy this here and we'll put D dot department ID. Awesome. And this is what our join is. So if I run this, you will see a data frame created, right? Which will have both the columns from department and employee. Let's put only the employee columns. So I'll write E dot star and we'll bring the department name. So I'll write D dot department 
name. So let me rerun this. Now you can see the department name column stream department and rest all column stream employee. Right now, again, this is a data frame. Now we have to call the action. So in order to view the data, we have to call show. So let me run this. Awesome. Now you can see the data here, right? You can see the department names according to the department ID. Let me go back and refresh the data frame tab. So I'll refresh this. Now you can see another job created. Let me expand this. Now you can see the broadcast join is happening by default because the AQE is taking care of the Spark SQL. It knows that the, both the tables need to be joined. So it will automatically do a broadcast join of the smaller data set. Now, if I come back, consider you need to provide a hint. Consider we don't want to do broadcast join, but we want to do a shuffle join. Now, in order to do that, you need to provide a hint. To provide a hint, you need to put it before the column name. So this is our column name. Let me put the hint here. So to provide a hint, you need to write slash star, then you need to put a plus and then you need to provide a hint. Now you can find the list of hints in the Spark SQL documentation. Now what I'll do is now for sort merge join, I'll put a hint called shuffle merge. This will instruct Spark to do a sort merge join for this particular join. So I'll write E in order to make the employee data as shuffle merge. Okay. And to end the hint, you can write star and then you can put a slash. Now if I run this, awesome, our join completed, right? Let me go back and refresh the data frame tab. Let me expand the job. Now you can see it is doing exchange, then a sort, then a sort merge join. Now you know how to provide hint, right? Now consider you have to specify broadcast join. In order to do that, you can provide a hint here. So similarly, you can write broadcast and you can provide the data set that you need to broadcast. So consider we want to broadcast the department, you can write like this. And if you run this, again, this will do broadcast join. So if I go back and refresh here, if I come back here, you can see broadcast happening for department data. Okay, so this is how it is done. Now, let me write this data. Now we know that if we run this, this will create a data frame, right? So consider I'll write it as EMP final. So this will be our data frame that we will create using this Spark SQL command. So let me run this. This is the data frame that is created. Let me view the data to you. So I'll write dot show. So if I run this, you can see the data frame is having the data, right? Let's write it as table. So to write a table, you have to write save as table. So to do that, I'll write emp final dot write. And you can specify a format for which the underlying data will be saved. So if I write parquet, so the underlying data will be saved as parquet. Okay. Now you can specify save as table and consider I'm writing it as emp final table. Okay, so let me run this. Awesome, our data writing is complete. Okay, let me scroll to the right. And now you can see a folder created called Spark Warehouse. So by default, in the present directory, Spark will create a folder called Spark Warehouse. If you expand this, you can see the EMP final folder. And you can see all the data being written in Parquet format. If I scroll it to right, you can see all the data being written in Parquet format. Now you have two options. You can read this data as a table directly because it has been registered in the catalog. So if I come back here and show you the catalog, you can see EMP final has been registered as a table and the is temporary is false. It means it is a table now. Okay. Now, if you want to read it as table, you can write EMP new and you can read it using spark dot read dot table. And you can specify the name, which is EMP final. And this will create a new data frame, which is EMP new. And now you can see the data EMP new dot show. And this will show you the data. Okay, now since this is already registered in the catalog, can we read it in the SQL query directly? The answer is yes. So consider you want to read it using SQL query. So you can write it like this spark.sql because we have this table in catalog. So we can write select star from and we can name the table here, which is EMP final. So if I run this, this will create this data from EMP new. Now if I write EMP new dot show, this will show you the data for that particular data frame. So now you know how to create a table, register it in the catalog and read it from that table directly. Now, all of this we were doing in the in-memory catalog. So if I show you the catalog still, it is in memory. So here is the catalog. So if I run this, the catalog is in memory. It means once I close this session, this particular catalog will be lost. So let me show you this. Let me stop the kernel. So what I'll do is I'll restart the kernel. Let me do it. Awesome, the kernel is restarted, okay? Let me go ahead and create my Spark session again. Okay, my Spark session is created, right? So if I come back to the catalog implementation again, see this is still in memory, okay? So now we know we can see the databases here, okay? If I show you the databases, we have only one database default, okay? Let me show you the tables now. Now you see everything is gone. Even the table is gone. 
okay because the catalog implementation was in memory it was lost when we restarted our session okay so is there a way to persist this metadata that we do not lose it when we come back and restart our session answer is yes and we have to implement the hive catalog implementation okay so to do that we have to put one more option here which is enable hive support so you have to write enable hive support so you have to use this now okay now before we do that let me restart the kernel so we can use enable hive support now okay my kernel is restarted let me rerun and create the spark session okay my spark session is created now let's read the data frames again so i'll do emp read and again we'll do department data frame okay now if i come back and show you the catalog implementation you can see it as hive it means now we have a persisting metadata i'll show you where the data is persisted just hold on for a minute okay now we can still see the databases so i'll rerun this query we have only one database default okay now let me show you the tables in that default database there is nothing okay let me come back to the left hand side and refresh this tab now if you'll see there is one folder created called metastore db and this is the location where spark will store your catalog metadata information so whenever you are going to recreate your session from this location it will by default read this metastore db location and it will bring in all your catalog okay let's see that let me create the employee and department temp view okay that is created let me go ahead and join employee and department here so i'll write employee and department uh, employee view and department view so i'll write emp view and department view okay i'll do a broadcast join so that is enabled by default but still use the print okay so let me run this the data frame is created i can show you the data frame here awesome let's go ahead and write this so i'll use the same write command we'll save this as employee final table okay so the data is written let me go back and show you the spark warehouse you can see the emp final folder created okay now if i come back to this catalog and show you the so tables in default you can see the emp final created here okay this is false because this is a table and this is not temporary this will retain even if we restart our spark session okay so this table is created right let me go ahead and read that table and show it to you so i'll read this and i'll show it to you in emp new you can see the data again okay so now that we know we have enabled hive support so the catalog data should be retained once we restart right so let me restart the kernel now let me generate the spark session again so i'll rerun this awesome my spark session is ready let me go ahead and show you the catalog implementation so i'll run this you see the catalog implementation is hive because we have enabled the hive support right so let me show you the database so i'll run this awesome we have the same default database there now let me show you the tables now you can see the emp final is still there because it's a table registered in the catalog it's not lost even if i restarted the session right so we can read this data again so let me go ahead and run this emp new where we are directly reading it from the sql query so i'll run this and again i'll run the show awesome it means our data store is persisted okay and this is how in a production scenario if a hype catalog is implemented the meta store is persisted in a particular location so in our demonstration the meta store was created in our present working directory okay you can see the meta store db but in a production scenario this meta store will be persisted in some databases or in a location which is available for all the spark jobs now that we know how we created our tables let's view the metadata for those tables okay so in order to view that metadata you can write spark dot sql and to view the metadata of a table you can write describe and the table name so our table is emp final so i'll put dot show in the end to show you the data so let me run this now you can see the column name data type and the comment column right but it does not provide you all the metadata information to see all the metadata information you can write extended and if you rerun this you can see there's a lot more information available now you can see the type of table you can see the database where it is stored you can even see the location if it is stored somewhere else now there are many more concepts regarding spark sql that you can find in PySpark documentation now if you like my session make sure to like and subscribe till then keep learning keep growing keep sharing